following program originates live with the NBC Television Network. Sports presents the 1965 World Series. From Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles, California, the Minnesota Twins meeting the Los Angeles Dodgers. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Ben Scully along with Ray Scott welcoming you to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles and the third game of the 1965 World Series. In appreciation for your continued support, the Gillette Safety Razor Company and Chrysler Corporation bring you this series and such other outstanding events as the All-Star Baseball Game, NCAA College Football, and the 1966 Rose Bowl Game, exclusively on NBC. A capacity crowd here at the ballpark of somewhere in the neighborhood of 55 to 56,000. And for the Dodgers, they either win today or I guess it's time to make out your shopping list for Christmas. They're down by two. No ball club in World Series history has ever lost the first three and come back to win. They go with left-hander Claude Osteen, who had beaten Minnesota five times while he was in the American League, and the Twins counter with their ace right-hander Camilo Pasquale. We'll have something else to say about the Dodgers, but right now, let's meet the voice of the Minnesota Twins, who's got to be thinking about Christmas. On the happy side, Ray Scott. Thank you, Vin Scully, and hi again, everybody. The Twins are well aware of what Vin Scully just mentioned to you, namely that Claude Osteen has exercised some sort of a hex, if you will, over the Twins, but not so much a hex as just plain good pitching. The Twins say that if Osteen has his control, no one is tougher as far as they are concerned. But they also are aware of the fact that Osteen against the Twins was in another year. Pasquale, meanwhile, as many of you know, has undergone surgery. He has come back, and he has not been able to pitch outstanding baseball since his operation, but he has been able to come back and show that he is physically sound. Camilo has for a number of years been recognized as one of the premier curveball pitchers in baseball. But his curve has not been, by his own admission, quite as good as it was before the operation. But he still has the good fastball, and all in all, it looks like a fine pairing as far as the pitching is concerned for this third game of the 1965 World Series. And right now, Vin Scully will be back with you. Thank you, Ray. Well, friends, this game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience. And any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the Commissioner. Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles and just to refresh your memory, the statistics for the first two games of the World Series, Minnesota beating the Dodgers handily 8-2, each side with 10 hits and the Dodgers committing an error. In the first game of the series, of course, the winning pitcher Jim Grant, the losing pitcher Don Drysdale. The second game of the series, again, it was all Minnesota, 5-1 on nine hits, the Dodgers with seven hits and three very big errors. In that game, the winning pitcher, a tremendous performance by left-hander Jim Codd and the losing pitcher for the Dodgers, Sandy Koufax. And now it is the third game as the scene shifted from Metropolitan Stadium in Bloomington, Minnesota to Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles. The first thing we will do is familiarize you with the ballpark and its dimensions. It is 3.30 down the line, but it begins to fall away rapidly. On the other side of the Dodger bullpen, in left field, it goes to 3.80, then to 3.90, and then to 410 in straightaway center field. And by the way, while we are looking at the wall, those are plywood panels as the center and left and right field walls. And a player can actually hit it and either bounce off or go right through. And although we have never seen an outfielder go through, we have seen them hit a jolting shot and still come away fortunately uninjured. 
It is a symmetrical part going back around to 380 behind the right fielder and 370 to the visiting bullpen and then down in the right field corner 330. So there are no advantages as far as being left handed or right handed. The Minnesota Twin bullpen and so far those fellows have been unemployed. They've had two complete games for the Twins by Jim Cott and Jim Grant. So Camilo Pasquale has a tough act to follow for the Dodgers. They have already seen two aces shot down Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale and now they will go with Claude Osteen. Meanwhile Pasquale tuning up not too much pressure on him. They've already gotten two in the bank. Here's a fellow I believe has some pressure on him. Koufax and Drysdale have lost. The Dodgers have not won and they are looking to him to do it. What are his thoughts about this third game of the World Series? We asked him just a couple of minutes ago. Well, sure, I'm well aware that uh, Sandy Koufax and Don Drysdale have both lost the first two ball games, but uh, at this stage of the, belt of the ball game, especially uh, since we've been playing professional baseball for nine or ten years, most of us, uh, you certainly can't uh, lay down and quit now because uh, we've played this game long enough to know that uh, you can't change your style of pitching for any particular game and uh, I'm just going to be uh, pitching my regular ball game. I know that uh, uh, I have beaten the Twins five times in the past and uh, I'm not going to let this enter in into anything that I would do during this ball game. I'm just going to pitch the way I have all year and uh, hope for the best. So Claude Osteen getting ready to take the mound. The Dodgers who will take the field. The captain at shortstop Maury Will followed by the veteran Jim Gilliam and Willie Davis in center field hitting third. Ron Fairley in the cleanup spot in right and Lou Johnson in left. Jim Lefever at second base. Wes Parker at first hitting eighth along with Johnny Roseborough the catcher and then the pitcher Claude Osteen. The third game of the 1965 World Series being brought to you from Dodger Stadium in Los Angeles California. Here at Dodger Stadium, the Marine Corps color guard marching the colors out to center field and the crowd standing in respect. A rather gray day in Los Angeles and we are hopeful that the sun will burn off the overcast. Now to give you the picture, the crowd standing and the public address announcer John Ramsey introducing Laurie Melchior who will sing our national anthem. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Loritz Melchior. large crowd settling back for baseball and to give you the Minnesota lineup and the particulars in play by play the voice of the Minnesota Twins here is Ray Scott. Right then the Twins today will start off with shortstop Zoilo Versailles. Zoilo one of the Twins big men so far in the series in center field right handed batting Joe Nasek. I should tell you Versailles bats right handed in right field batting third left handed swinging Tony Oliva. The Twins third baseman Harmon Killebrew will again be in the cleanup spot. 
Earl Batty will bat number five, the Twins catcher. In left field, right-handed batting, Bob Allison, whose sensational catch of a sinking liner in the second game of the series was not only one of the World Series greatest defensive plays, but it could well have turned around the second game. Don Mincher bats seven and will be the first baseman. First-year player Frank Quillacy is at second and on the mound with a record of nine wins and three losses in the regular season and making his first World Series appearance as is the Dodger. Right hand or left hander Claude Osteen. Pasquale has won nine and lost three. And now the announcement to this huge throng here that Casey Stengel, one of baseball's greatest names, will throw out the first ball. And it's to catcher Johnny Roseboro. What would a World Series game be without a Casey Stengel present in some capacity, official or unofficial? We pause briefly for station identification. The photographers are asking Casey for the proverbial one more. Manager Sam Mealy on his right and manager Walter Alston walking away and I guess Ben we should pass along the uh, bit of intelligence that uh, manager Sam and wife Connie are still awaiting the arrival of the youngster and as I understand it uh, number five in the Mealy household was due on Wednesday of this week and so Casey Stengel recovering from his accident goes to his seat and the Dodgers take the field the Dodgers defensively today will have Wes Parker at first Jim Lefevre at second Mari Wills at short. Junior Gilliam at third. The left fielder, Lou Johnson. Willie Davis in center. Ron Fairley in right. John Roseborough, the catcher. And on the mound, the 15 game winner in the regular season, Claude Osteen. Twin coaches at first base, Jim Lemon. At third base, Billy Martin. The umpires for this third game of the 1965 World Series from the American League behind the plate, John Flaherty. At first base from the National League, Ed Sudol. The American League's Bob Stewart will be at second. Calling him as he sees him at third will be the National League's Ed Vargo. Along the left field line, Tony Benson from the National League and on the right field line, Ed Hurley of the American League. Claude Osteen, and much has been made of this, and rightfully so, has never lost to the Twins. While pitching for the Washington Senators, his former club, he compiled a record of five wins and no losses against the Twins. In the regular season, he won 15 and lost 15. He was... Uh, I guess there's always one pitcher, it seems, on every winning ball club who is destined not to get run support. And uh, Osteen had that happen to him this season because despite a 500 record, his earned run average was a sparkling 2.79. He worked 287 innings. The Twins regard him as a tremendous competitor and to a man they say one thing. If he is getting his pitches over, he is tough to beat. And so the Twins, with a record of two wins and no losses, will be trying for three in a row, and the Dodgers in the friendly confines of Dodger Stadium will try to break through. Twins leadoff batter, Zoilo Versailles, has collected three hits in ten at-bats in the series and has knocked in four runs, has played very well in the field. He has stolen one base. His regular season batting average, 
273. And batting almost exclusively in the leadoff spot, knocked in 77 runs while homering 19 times. He has one home run in this series. Had a brief delay here, Ed Hurley. And the announcement was made that Hurley was going to work on the right field line. Hurley is working on the left field line. And there's been a delay while Ed Hurley was uh, having some sort of a conference with the Dodger manager, Walter Alston. But right now, we're about ready to go. The Dodgers will play Versailles just about straight away. And lefty Claude Osteen will try to put the Dodgers on the winning track. And here's the first pitch of the third game. Deep to left. Into the stand, ground rule double. <laughs> Lou Johnson went to the corner, didn't have a chance to make a play on the ball. And Versailles continues his tremendous hitting. And here is the center fielder, Joe Nosick. He started the second game when the Dodgers used the left-hander, Sandy Kopak. He collected one hit in three at bats. In a step at third, Gilliam. Ball one. And the lights are on here at Dodger Stadium. So we're two for three in that department. The lights on for the second game of the series back at Metropolitan Stadium in Minnesota. Didn't get the fastball, one and one. Osteen has excellent breaking pitches. Right side. Out at first, and Versailles goes to third. Parker to Osteen for the put up. Here is Tony Oliva. In the regular season, Oliva hit 226 here at Dodger Stadium. I should tell you, Versailles hit 289 in the regular series. Oliva in the World Series, one hit in eight at bats. It was a double. And he knocked in the first run of the second game with it. The outfield will be straight away as manager Walter Austin has the Dodger infield at the edge of the grass. Strike. Oliva, the latter weeks of the regular season started to wear the glove on the right hand. Versailles leading a third. And he felt that it helped him in gripping the bat and he has not thrown the bat as much as he did in the earlier part of the season. Low one and one. Game just underway. The Twins have Versailles at third with one out. Runner has to hold. Two down. Versailles, believing Osteen might field the ball, had to hold a third. And with two down, the batter is Harmon Killebrew. He has had three hits in six at bats in the series and has knocked in a run. Dodger outfield shades Killebrew a bit to the left. Ball one. Killebrew asks that the ball be examined. 
Plate umpire John Flaherty apparently detects some slight flaw and a new ball is in play. Two out, Versailles at third. Wins batting in the first inning. Right. One and one. Missing outside with his fastball, ball two, strike one. feels that his swing will not be 100% sound until next year. Twins Versailles taking his lead at third. Ball four. Just off the outside edge. So pitching carefully, Killebrew walks, and with two down, the Twins catcher Earl Batty comes to the plate. Batty in the first two games of the series collected two hits in eight at bats and knocked in two runs. Playing here during the regular season, Batty was the Twins' top hitter with a 320 batting average, eight hits in 25 at bats and knocked in three runs. Dodger center fielder Willie Davis plays Batty several strides toward right. Ball one. Versailles led off this ball game by hitting the first pitch for two bases, the ground rule double to left. Moved to third as Nostic grounded out and held third as Oliva grounded out. Killebrew has walked and Batty takes the fastball outside. Ball two. Versailles. Killebrew. Killebrew is going to second to throw down there. Versailles is halfway to the plate, being run now toward the plate to throw it to the catcher. Versailles back to third, and he is out. And so at the end of the first half inning, the score is the Twins nothing, and the Dodgers are coming to bat. The Twins defensively have Don Mincher at first. Frank Pulisi at second, flanked by the shortstop, Zoilo Versailles. Harmon Killebrew is at third. The left fielder, Bob Allison. Joe Nasik in center. Tony Oliva in right. Earl Batty is the catcher. And right-hander Camilo Pasquale is the pitcher. The Dodger coaches at first, Danny Ozark. And a third, Preston Gomez. Leading it off, Mari Wills. In the series, three hits, nine at bats, and an RBI. Ball one. Out. That's the first time in the series that Wills has really tested Killebrew. He bunted for a base hit to drive in a run in the first game, but it was a drag bunt toward first. With one out, here is Jim Gilliam. One for nine in the series. First inning, no score. The Dodgers batting with one out and none on. Ball one.
Pasquale had to have surgery because of torn muscles behind the right shoulder. Ball two. Reading signs from third base coach Preston Gomez. Ball three. Pasquale this season worked only 156 innings. Strike three and one. And in that period of time struck out 96 and walked 63. Ball three strike one count to Gilliam. Strike three and two. For those of you who uh, like to keep a scorecard I should tell you that put out on Versailles went two six two five with the third baseman getting the put out. Base hit. Tony Oliva. A double. Gilliam with one away is on second. That's the Dodgers second extra base hit in the series. The other was the home run by Fairley in the first game and here is Willie Davis. The Dodgers center fielder is one for eight. The outfield is shaded a bit to the right. Clarity will have a look at the baseball. Versailles is at the mound. Pasquale up until this season was uh, always near the top in the American League in strikeouts and led the league in that department on several occasions. Ball one to Willie Davis. Gilliam on second and one out. First inning, no score. Foul back. One and one. Wall has long been a kicker of dirt at the mound. One of the uh, real landscapers in the pitching profession. Center fielder Joe Nosick. Two down and Gilliam will hold at second. Nosick showing a fine arm. And as Willie Davis goes to the dugout. Ron Fairley comes to the plate. Fairley has collected three base hits and eight official at bats. One of them a home run. So far, Pasquale has shown little confidence in his curve, and he's been mainly throwing the fastball. He does not throw a slider. Strike one. Last year, for the first time, Pasquale added a change off the fastball. Up until last year, he would rely on many speeds of his curveball to keep the hitter off balance. High one and one. The Dodgers, Jim Gilliam. On second and Pasquale working to fairly. Yeah. 
Just inside, ball two, strike one. A squall is 31 years old. Twins outfield playing fairly just a little bit to the right. Foul, two and two. Top of the first, the Twins had a double by Versailles and a walk to Killebrew. Gilliam on second with a Dodger double here in the first. 2-2 Two -two pitch. Bob Allison. And the Dodgers are out, leaving one man on. And at the end of the first inning, the score is the Dodgers nothing and the Twins nothing. We have a scoreless first inning, Osteen and Pasquale in this third game, and the Twins in the second will send up catcher Earl Batty, the left fielder Bob Allison, and first baseman Don Mincher. Batty was the batter when the Twins either tried a delayed double steal or else conceivably a hit and run sign was on. This 1965 World Series game being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC as Gilliam throws out Batty. Allison is the Twins batter. He said one hit and four at bats in the series. It was a double and came up with what has so far been the fielding play of the series. Strike one. You can tell just by looking he is strong. Now strike two. Allison's remarkable catch in the second game of the series on a drive hit by Lefevre. Looking back on it now, could well have turned the second game completely around. Two strike count on Allison, one out, none on, second inning, no score. Fair ball, Roseboro to Parker, two down. Twins first baseman comes to the plate now. Two hits, seven at bats, including a homer. Minch at one time had the label of being able to hit only right-handed pitching. He has changed it this season. Base hit. Hit number two off Osteen. Mincher on first with two out in the second. And the batter is the second baseman, Frank Quillacy. Quillacy's had two hits in six at bats, and he tied a World Series record by getting two hits in one inning. A double and a single in the first game of the series. He has knocked in one run. Ball one. Foul away. Incidentally, on deck right now, uh, Camilo Pasquale is one of the better hitting pitchers in baseball. I am told that one time in an all-star game in Cuba a few years back, he hit three home runs in one game. Ball one, strike one to Quillacy. Parker holding with Mincher. Strike. Osteen's fastball getting the inside edge of the plate. No 
score as the Twins bat in the second. One hot to Wills. To the fever. Mincher is forced. The Twins are out and leave one on. And so at the end of an inning and a half, the score is the Twins nothing and the Dodgers nothing. How does Pasquale feel? Here's what he had to say a few moments before the game started. Uh, my my uh, arm has been feeling real good, and uh, my fastball has been has been as good as ever. Uh, maybe my two boys, uh, I, I don't feel really satisfied, but it's because I don't have working enough. But I feel real good, and I'm ready to go. Lou Johnson leads it off for the Dodgers in the second. One hit in eight trips. The Dodger left fielder. Foul. Strike one. The infield at Dodger Stadium, in comparison to the infield of the Twins home ballpark in Bloomington, Minnesota, Metropolitan Stadium, the infield here is hard. Whereas... Mari Wills, for example, described the infield in Minnesota as being a soft infield. And the infielders are aware of the fact, and this caused them sometimes to play a bit differently. Pasquale missing inside with his fastball, one and one. Killaboo, for example, said that he would play back just a bit deeper in any given situation than he would in his home ballpark. Deep to left center. Off the wall. A double. The Dodgers' third extra base hit of the series. Johnson leads off the Dodgers' second with a double. And the batter... Another member of this Dodger switch hitting infield, Jim Lefevre. He's had a good series. Three hits, eight at bat. He had a tremendous latter portion of the regular season. Killebrew in about a step, two steps at third. Ball one. Allison in left, one away. Johnson holds it second. The first baseman, Wes Parker. He's had just four official at bats despite playing the first two games of the series. He's had two hits. No score, Dodger second. Johnson is on second with one out. a huge throng here at Dodger Stadium. In the Twins outfield, three very strong throwing arms in Allison, Nasik, and Oliva. Nasik in center. Johnson tagging at second. Two down and a runner at third. Johnson at third. Two out. And the batter is Roseboro. He has collected two hits in eight at bats in the series and knocked in a run. In fact, he knocked in a run. 
in the seventh inning of the second game with two out and the pitcher do next. Dodgers with two hits, both of them doubles. Gilliam in the first with one out. Johnson here in the second to lead off the inning. Quillacy to Mincher. The Dodgers are out and leave one on. And so at the end of the second inning, the score is the Twins nothing and the Dodgers nothing. Score, well now, we'll join in that. 62 years of age today. I mention it because it's already been publicized and I can't be accused of revealing any state secrets. So a happy birthday to the president of the Dodgers, Mr. Walter O'Malley. Claude Osteen will be called upon to face Pasquale, Versailles, and Nasik here in the third inning. I had earlier mentioned that Camilo's a pretty good batter. Now his average this season, just 200, with 12 hits and 60 at bats, but included in his hits, two home runs and one was a grand slammer. He knocked in eight runs. Today's attendance, 55,934. Foul out of play on the right side. This is the top attendance for a World Series game here at Dodger Stadium. The previous high was 55,912. So if you're interested in statistics, you have yet another one. Pasquale dearly loves the high outside fastball. Right back to the mound and on to first, one away. The Twins batter is Versailles. Doubled in the first. But as far as third, we would have to wait until after the game is over to find out whether the Twins had a delayed double steal on or a possible hit and run. But with Killebrew on first and Versailles on third, Killebrew broke for second. And Versailles wound up being caught in a rundown. That's right. Versailles has collected four hits in 11 at bats. A homer. A triple, a double, and a single. So Versailles is hit for the cycle. Low and inside, one and one. Lefty Claude Osteen. Shortstop of the Twins, Lloyd Versailles. Ground ball to second. Lefebvre on to first, two down. center fielder Joe Nasek grounded out first baseman to pitcher covering in the first inning two out none on third inning there is no score foul paying uh, particular attention right now to that scouting report on Nasik. You can see there how Gilliam is playing Nasik very close to the line, aware of the fact that they're going to pitch him inside. Just rolls foul. Scouting report on Nasik, to my knowledge, says that he likes the ball out and away from him. So the first two pitches, Osteen jammed him. So it's still strike two. Nasik has very good speed and is rated as a fine outfielder with a good throwing arm. Ah, 
somehow. Manager Sam Mealy started to platoon with Nasik about mid-season, starting him against left-handed pitchers, and he played well. Missing inside this time, ball one, strike two. Twins left a man on in the first, another in the second, and the same with the Dodgers. Just inside with his fastball again, two and two. Second baseman Lefevre. Out at first, a one, two, three inning. So at the end of two and a half innings, the score, the Dodgers nothing and the Twins nothing. In the Dodger third, the pitcher, Claude Osteen, the shortstop, Mari Wills, and the third baseman, Jim Gillian. Osteen in the regular season had 12 hits and 99 at bat. Neither team able to break through. Each team with two hits. Strike. jacket that's the National League's Ed Sudol the umpire at first Wills trying to bunt his way on in the first inning was thrown out by third baseman Harmon Killebrew the size the quality, no chance for the double play one out. The batter now, Jim Gilliam. The side is at the mound to have a word with Pasquale. Now, Wills has not stolen a base in the World Series. Pasquale, as I am sure you have noticed, has a big motion. When he wears back, a base runner has that additional split second. Gillian doubled his first trip. There goes Wills, strike. And the ball not held by Versailles. Stolen base. throw had been down the twins conceivably would have been able to get will that he got rid of the ball in a hurry but it was just a bit high and so the Dodgers have wills at second with one out a count of strike one to Gilliam Gilliam's double in the first inning he pulled an inside pitch between Mincher the first baseman and the line no score top last half of the third The bunt attempt is foul. Strike two. It's pretty obvious that the Dodgers' strategy calls for 
the Dodgers to try and hunt for base hits. Then Scully has an unofficial count here, and I think that's three times the Dodgers have tried to bunt for a base hit. High and inside, ball one. Wills leading at second. Short to first, two down, and Wills at third. The batter will be Willie Davis, and we'll watch with interest and see whether Pasquale works out of a windup or not with Wills on third. First time up, Davis sent a fly ball to center. Pasquale will not work out of a windup. He does not get the slow curve. Strike one. Now that, in my opinion, is the best curveball Pasquale has thrown today. Bluff bunt bringing Killebrew toward the plate. Get over. Mencher out at first and a near collision. As Mincher decided not to risk the throw, the Dodgers are out and leave one on. So at the end of the third inning, the score is the Twins nothing and the Dodgers nothing. We pause for station identification. Tony Oliva has some problems with the English language, but we did get a chance to ask him about facing Claude Osteen. Let's see, uh, let's see, uh, Rustin, he used to pitch for the, uh, Washington, and he beat us about four or five times. And he got a pretty good fastball, and he got a good score. But this is last year, and this is a different year. He's now in different clubs, and let's see, we, sometimes we got four or five runs, three runs, and he still beat us. So maybe this year is different. Oliva has been held well in check by Dodger pitching in the series, collecting just one hit in nine at bat. It was a double, and it produced a run. In the first inning today, grounded out second to first. Strike. Dodgers give Oliva a lot of room in right center. Oliva will be followed by Killebrew and Batty. There's the gap in right center. Ow. Ed Hurley will field the ball. Oliva is scheduled for surgery on the middle finger of his right hand as soon as the season is over. He has a bone chip there, and although the swelling's been down the last month or so, it's caused him considerable discomfort for well over a year. Foul. At one time, American League pitchers felt they could get Oliva out by pitching him high and tight. But he's a smart hitter, and he adjusted well. And on many an occasion, he'll hit that inside pitch now to left field shallow. Twice in a row, the American League batting champion this year and last. Low and outside, one and two. Oliva asks that the ball be examined. Uh, 
Bud Osteen, never a loser to the Twins, with the Senators, five wins, no losses against Minnesota. Breaking ball low, two and two. Twins had runners at first and third in the first inning. Had a runner at second in the second. Strike three. Osteen has his first strikeout. During the season, Osteen, in winning 15 and losing 15, struck out 162 in 287 innings. Killebrew walked in the first inning. Killebrew suffered a dislocation of the left elbow in a collision with the Orioles' Russ Snyder on the 2nd of August and was out of action about seven weeks. Fastball low and away, one and one. Change curb low, ball two strike one. Osteen has retired the last five twins. Three and one. The twins in playing nine regular season games here at Dodger Stadium this year hit just one home run. And as a team batted 201 in this ballpark. Pulled the short. The first, two down. With two out and none on and no score here in the fourth inning, Earl Batty comes to the plate. Was thrown out by Gilliam in the second inning. Quite a basketball player at one time. A couple of bounces to short. One, two, three. And so at the end of three and a half innings, the score is still the Twins nothing and the Dodgers nothing. Tonight at 8.30, 7.30 Central Time, that super sleuth, Maxwell Smart, outsmarts a band of smugglers. Watch the world's worst secret agent in action tonight on Get Smart in color. Ron Fairley starts it off for the Dodgers in the fourth inning to be followed by Lou Johnson and Jim Lefevre. There is no score. Fairley flied out to left in the first inning. Pasquale has allowed three hits. One in each inning. Gilliam's double in the first. Johnson's double in the second. And Osteen's single in the third. Pasquale has issued no walks and he has no strikeout. Ball one. One and one. fielding the ball and three innings in a row the leadoff batter on fairly content to go with the outside pitch and not try to overpower it so four Dodger hits and three of them have been doubled the batter Lou Johnson 
doubled up the left center field alley in the second inning. No score, but the Dodgers with the leadoff batter on second in the last of the fourth. Pasquale to Mincher, and the runner moves to third, one out. The Twins are now looking to the dugout as Jim Lefevre comes to the plate. Twins uh, wanting manager Sam Mealy to indicate where shall we play on in the infield. Lefebvre sent a fly ball to shallow left in the second inning with Johnson on second. He comes up now with Fairley on third and only one out in the last of the fourth of a scoreless game. Versailles with a tremendous play and the runner is held at third. base hit. Zoilo Versailles cutting off a certain run but the Dodgers still have a one out threat going with runners at first and third. The batter Wes Parker sent a fly ball to center in the second inning. Hit it deep. Frank Pulisi and Zoilo Versailles are getting set on their strategy. one the runner at third is fairly at first Lefevre held by Mincher and you can see where the infield is playing outside ball two Camilo Pasquale in a one out jam of this scoreless game in the fourth inning. Ball two and no strikes to Parker. Ball three. Three and oh. Four, safe at third. Bases are loaded with one out. Earl Batty has asked for time and a meeting at the mound. Harmon Killebrew joins the discussion. While this is going on on the infield, the outfielders, center and left, Nasik and Allison have had a meeting. John Roseboro grounded out second to first in the second inning. Now, as you'll note, the Twins have the infield at the edge of the grass on the left side, halfway on the right side. Ball one low. So Batty called for the off-speed pitch on the first pitch. take a 2 nothing lead. Fairly scored. Lefevre scored. Parker stopped at second. And the Dodgers break through. And the pitcher, Claude Osteen, comes to the plate. 
slapped an outside pitch into left field for a base hit in the third inning. Six hits off Pasquale. The Twins are anticipating a bunt. A pop up. Third baseman Killebrew and the infield fly rule is in effect and it's two down. Mari Wills comes up, rounded out in the first, rounded into a force play in the third, and then proceeded to steal second. The Dodgers two and the Twins nothing, with Dodger runners at first and second, two out, last of the fourth. The runner from second going for third, the throw, and he is safe. And the runner goes to second. So Parker steals third, Roseboro steals second. And there's the instant replay of that steal, and with Kilber playing in tight, you'll note the throw was there in time, but with the third baseman in, he could not get the ball to the runner, and so the Dodgers have runners at second and third. It was a strike to Will. Strike, 0 and 2. Pasquale in this inning has given up a double, an infield single, a walk, and a bases loaded single to Roseboro. In the dirt, ball one. On third base, Parker. On second base, Roseboro. the shallow center Versailles is back and the Dodgers are out but score twice and so at the end of the fourth inning the score the Dodgers two and the twins nothing this 1965 World Series game is being brought to you live and in color exclusively on NBC well Ben Scully with the announcement that Dick Krasuski is the new second baseman did you notice at what point Jimmy Lefevre might have injured his ankle Yes, I did, Ray. When Lefebvre was scoring on the base hit by Roseboro, Osteen and Wills were up at the plate telling Jimmy to slide because Tony Oliva has one of the great throwing arms in the American League. Lefebvre seemed to hesitate as to whether he was going to slide or come in standing up. And it was at that point, I believe, when he twisted the ankle and he eventually came in standing up and now goes out. So a new Dodger second baseman, Dick Trzewski, and Bob Allison is up, taking a curve from Osteen for strike one. Allison sent a little tapper in front of the plate in the second inning and was thrown out by Roseboro. The Dodgers have a 2-0 lead in this third game of the World Series. Foul off the hand of Billy Martin. Strike two. Twins third base coach, Bill Martin. The Twins have managed but two hits. Osteen has walked one and struck out one. It's an errorless game. Just a bit low with a fast ball. Ball one, strike two. John Mincher comes to the plate. We asked him before the ball game about facing Osteen. 
I think uh, the reason that Osteen has given us a little trouble in the past is because he has real good stuff. He keeps his pitches low. And when he pitched against us before, uh, we didn't have uh, boys like Oliva that, you know, is our third hitter now who can who can hit left-handers as well as right-handers. And Versalis has come along so much better since the time that he pitched against us that uh, I think we should fare a lot better against him. And uh, he's got good control. But now that we've got the confidence we can beat anybody, I'm sure that uh, we'll be tougher on him than before. Mincher singled his first time up today. Low ball two. One out, none on. Twins batting in the fifth inning, and the Dodgers have a two to nothing lead. Right. Two and one. Osteen has retired eight in a row. Mincher's single in the second, representing the last Twins base runner. Krasuski the first two down Dick Krasuski many of you recall is no stranger to World Series competition he played in all four games when the Dodgers swept the Yankees in 1963 here is Frank Quillacy grounded into a force out in the second inning two out and none on fifth inning First baseman Wes Parker calling another one two three inning and so at the middle of the fifth inning the score is the Dodgers two and the Twins nothing. The second half of today's game is brought to you by Chrysler Corporation. Today's host Chrysler and Imperial and your local Chrysler and Imperial dealers. As we move to the last half of the fifth inning with the Dodgers leading two to nothing, it's my pleasure to bring in to carry you along the rest of the way the voice of the Dodgers, Vin Scully. Thank you, Ray, and hi, everybody. Jim Gilliam, Willie Davis, and Ron Fairley in that order. Two to nothing Dodgers, bottom of the fifth. Gilliam doubled inside first and down the line and grounded to short. Timeout until the ground crew leaves. Jim one for two. I drive to deep right hooking down the line foul and deep in the lower deck. Oh and one. Gilliam is not a home run threat. Particularly in a park of this size. Jim hit four home runs this year. One and one. Pasquale is due up first when the Twins hit in the sixth inning. So they have their bullpen working for the second time, and again, it's left-handed Jim Merritt. Ball two. Camillo having more trouble with his control in the last inning. There is Jimmy Merritt. In 1961, he worked in the Dodger clubhouse. Ball three. So Camillo struggling with the strike zone right now. He has been basically high wild, although he's only walked one. Two runs, six hits for the Dodgers. They've left five. No runs, two hits for the Twins. They have left two. Up fly on the right side, Mincher and Quillacy with Quillacy calling. One away. <laughs> Willie Davis, fly to center, grounded to first. 0 for 2. Willie 1 for 10 in the series. A notorious first ball hitter. Time out for the moment. The sun is doing its best to burn off the early morning glare and is now beginning to present a couple of problems. So Frank Quillacy, who had a little trouble with the pop fly, 
wants sunglasses. Zoilo Versailles comes over to get a pair. And they're going to bring some to Nosek and perhaps to Oliva as well. It's a tough sky. And of course, with a big crowd and shirt sleeve, it presents an extra problem to get any kind of a jump on a ball hit in the air. So the boys go into their glasses. So Allison, Nosek, and Oliva get glasses along with Quillacy and Versailles. One out, bottom of the fifth. Dodgers two, twins nothing. Low curve for a strike. One reason the Dodgers are trying to bunt a little bit more today, I think they themselves realize they let an opportunity get away in Minnesota. One and one. It was on that rainy day in the second game with a wet infield. That was their game and they let it go by. Fastball, line to center, Nosek. Plays it on a hop. Seven hits for the Dodgers, and Willie Davis is a definite threat to go. In fact, right now, with Fairley up, among other things, with less than two out, there's a definite possibility of a hit and run play. Willie Davis stole 25 bases this year. Fairley has been unable to pull Pasquale. He flied to left and then doubled to left. Willie held on by Don Minchu. Willie and Wills, if they were put shoulder to shoulder in a hundred yard dash, Willie Davis would win. However, no one is able to get off in high gear the way Wills does. It takes Willie a few steps to build up to top speed. There he goes. Off the glove, down to Quillacy. No play at second. The play is to first. So they played hit and run. And Fairley winds up grounding out to Frank Quillacy. One thing that helped the twins with Willie going, Quillacy was breaking towards the bag and therefore came right into the play. Two out. Here's Lou Johnson. Lou double the left center and sacrificed. He's one for one. Dodgers two, twins nothing, two out in the fifth inning. Fouled away. The Dodgers came to Los Angeles in 1958, and since coming here, they have played before more than 18 million Angelinos. 0 oh and 1. Willie's going to third. Line drive into left center base hit. Willie scores, and Johnson's heading for two. He's in there. The Dodgers now have four doubles in their eight hits. They lead three to nothing. Johnson two for two, both doubles, and Dick Trususki the batter. Two out. So Camilo Pasquale having trouble putting that ball where he wants it. He's getting it up, and they're being hit. Dick Trususki, as Ray mentioned to you, played all four games against the Yankees. The Dodgers tried to make him a more aggressive hitter. If you were scouting him, you'd say he takes a lot of strikes, and they're trying to get him swing more. Ball one.
Pasquale pitching today somewhat the way Drysdale pitched in Minnesota, having trouble getting that ball down. Jim Merritt still heating up in the bullpen. Willie was going on that pitch to Johnson and now lose taking a big lead. Ball two. Everything high. We are awaiting further word on Lefevre. Among other things, Pasquale's cleats are filling up, so he's having trouble. Here, Mickey Rooney guest stars in a power pack drama this Wednesday evening when Bob Hope presents the Chrysler Theater in color at 9, 8 Central Time on NBC. The Twins make a change. Rich Rollins, right hand batter, coming up to bat for Camilo Pasquale. Rollins making his first World Series appearance to 249 during the regular season with five home runs, 32 RBIs. A bunt foul. So Rich will try it again. So Camilo Pasquale worked five innings, allowed three runs, eight hits, walked one, but his trouble still a case of lack of control. Did not strike out a batter. Comebacker, Osteen to Parker, one away. Zoilo Versailles, who has really stood out in this series with the glove, with the bat, with his legs. Today, he doubled, grounded out, made a fine play on the ball hit by Lefevre. One for two today is four for 12 in the series. Gilliam plays him even with the bag at third. Strike. Gilliam was on the move. Jim right at the bag. Osteen trying to in and out him. One ball, one strike. Claude is not an overpowering pitcher. He has to have good control. And in the first two innings, he had a little trouble. But then he has improved with control just as Pasquale had his troubles. Hit the shatter, base hit. So Versailles has his fifth hit of the series. Boy, he's an exciting player to watch. Joe Nosek had a few thoughts about the series. Here's what he said. Uh, the field is uh, much harder than the Minnesota field has been lately, and uh, I think the sun's going to play a factor today. Uh, it's cloudy out there now, and I hope it stays that way because uh, in center field, the sun is uh, right in the fielder's eyes. So uh, if it stays cloudy, it shouldn't be too rough out there today. Line drive over Krasuski's glove, and Versailles goes into third base. So a line drive single to put Twins at first and third with one out as Minnesota now tries to get back in business. American League batting champ Tony Oliva coming up, and the Dodger bullpen will stir around. That's Howie Reed, number 39, right-hander, and Ron Paranoski, the left-hander. Osteen had a string going. He had retired 11 in a row and has now given up back-to-back -back singles to Versailles and Nosek. And here is Oliva, grounded out and struck out. Gilliam at the bag, Parker holding Nosek.
second base back. Ground ball to Trususki. He's on the bag for one. Doubles in the third. No runs. Two hits. Two left. And at the end of five and a half, Dodgers three, twins nothing. Bottom of the sixth inning, the total, the Dodgers three runs, eight hits, and no errors. They have left six. The Twins, no runs, four hits, and no errors. They have left three. Camilo Pasquale went five. And left-hander Jim Merritt will pick up and become the first Minnesota relief pitcher in the series. Jim Merritt, 6'3", 180 pounder. He was born in Altadena, California. He lives in West Covina. He was at one time a Dodger clubhouse boy, both home and away, as far as the clubhouses are concerned at the Coliseum. And both Jim Lefevre and Jim Merritt worked in the clubhouse. They were both on the Dodger rookie squad, amateur players. And then Merritt was eventually drafted by Minnesota. The one natural, of course, would be to have Merritt pitch against Lefevre. But the quirk of fate had Lefevre twist his ankle and have to come out in the fourth inning. So Jimmy Merritt picks up in the sixth inning. While he warms up, a reminder, next Saturday, NBC will telecast one of the top college football games of the year when Texas meets Arkansas in the NCAA Game of the Week at 4 o'clock Eastern Time, 3 o'clock Central Time, live and in color, exclusively on NBC. And remember that before each college football game is the Bud Wilkinson NCAA Preview Show. Wes Parker, Johnny Roseboro, and Claude Osteen in the sixth. Dodgers three, twins nothing. Over, Get West, boy. Ball one. Over, West. Over, boy. Young Jim Merritt won five and lost four for the twins. He saved two. ERA of three. Curve for a strike. One and one. Breaking ball high, ball two, two and one. Dodgers scored twice in the fourth and once in the fifth. And Rich Rollins batted for Pasquale in the top of the sixth. Hit into right center for the base hit. Nasik up with the ball, so Wes Parker is one for two. And the Dodger leadoff man has done well getting on in the second, in the third, in the fourth, and in the sixth. Here is Johnny Roseboro, who's had the big hit so far today for the Dodgers. Single to right to drive in two in the fourth inning. He was the trailer man on a double steal, and he's grounded out. He's one for two. Parker during the regular season stole 13. High fly ball to right field. Oliva's there. One away. Here comes Claude Osteen. Claude single to left in the third inning, popped up in the fourth. Killebrew playing up inside the bag, and Mincher ready to push off at first. Strike. Claude around as if to bunt, then pull that bat back. Bottom of the sixth, one out. Parker at first. Three nothing Dodgers. Osteen checking to see if the bunt is on with Preston Gomez. The bunt's on and it's fouled away. Now Osteen is checking to see if they want him to try and bunt with two strikes. 
There's a man flashing the signs. Preston Gomez coaching at third. Parker at first, held on by Minchu. One out. The bunt. Down to get it, Merritt has to go to first base to second baseman Quillacy covering. So the sacrifice works. Parker moves up 90 feet, and the batter will be Maury Will. One four if you're scoring. Merritt almost stumbled as he fielded that ball. Wills tried to bunt his way aboard, and Killebrew threw him out in the first inning, hit into a fourth play in the third, and popped up in the fourth. All three trips, he was hitting left-handed against Pasquale. Now he'll go the other way. When Wills bats right-handed, most of the time when he bunts, he pushes it up along first base. Lined in the right center field. Nasser coming over in a hurry. Dive. Can't get it. Backed up nicely by Oliva. The run is over a double for Will. Lamari well, Wills picks up a double, and the Dodgers now have ten hits, five of them doubles. Nosek really let out to try and catch it, and Oliva made a fine heads-up play to back up. Had the ball gotten by Nosek and Oliva not backing up, Wills would have had a cinch triple. So it is four to nothing, Dodgers, and here is Gilliam. Everybody in the Dodger lineup now has at least one hit. Pickoff play, but no throw. Johnny Klipstein, veteran right-hander, loosening up in the Twins' bullpen. Wills trying to open a hole for Gilliam. Pickoff play, they get him! And the Dodgers settle for a run on two hits, nobody left. And at the end of six innings of play, the Dodgers four, and the Twins nothing. We pause now for station identification. This is the CBC Television Network. Let's take a look at that pickoff play involving Wills at second base. There's Maury. And Quillacy is there to hang him out to drive. Seventh inning. Dodgers four runs, ten hits, and no errors. The Twins no runs, four hits, and no errors. And big boy coming up, Harmon Killebrew to lead it off. Then Earl Batty and Bob Allison. Killebrew walked and grounded to short. He's 0 for 1, 3 for 7 in the series. High fly ball to right. Fairly coming over. Sunglasses down. When Osteen's fastball is working properly, he's a tough man to pull. That fastball had a little tail on it. Killebrew tried to pull, and as you saw, I hit the fly ball to right. Earl Batty has grounded a third, grounded a short. So he's two for ten. The left-hander loosening up now is Bill Pleese, along with right-hander Johnny Klipstein. Fly ball to Willie Davis. He flicks the shades down. Two out. Here's the man who made the great defensive play the other day in 
Metropolitan Stadium. Bob Allison. As a batter today, Roseboro threw him out when he topped the ball and he struck out 0 for 2. 1 for 6 in the series. Slider for a strike. Roll down to Trususki. That'll do it. They're out in order one, two, three, and the score at the end of six and a half innings of play. Dodgers four, twins nothing. As we go to the bottom of the seven, four nothing Dodgers, and I butchered the pronunciation of his name, so with everybody watching, let's let's straighten it out. The left hander is Bill Fleiss. And I'm sorry, Bill. With him, Johnny Clipstein. Jim Gilliam, Willie Davis, and Ron Fairley. This might be Gilliam's last at bat. Normally, leading, John Kennedy finishes up a third. Strike. Gilliam is doubled, grounded to short, and popped up. One for three. He turned that pitch over. So it Jimmy throwing a screwball and tried to get it on the corner and missed. One and one. Jim Merritt in relief of starter Camilo Pasquale. Another one. And he missed with the screwball again. Two and one. Gilliam leading off the inning, but Killebrew is not playing him to bunt. He's back. Line to left field. Allison in his tracks. One away. The message board in left field now informs us that the x-rays on Jim Lefevre's ankle negative. And it turns out to be a bruised heel. However, they do not tell us whether he's ready to play tomorrow or not. Willie Davis is one for three. Slide to center, roll to first, single to center. Breaking ball missed. Ball one. Willie two for 11 in the series. Curve ball popped up. Mincher and Batty hustling over. Need a man and Batty it drops to his knees. He hit that railing very hard. It's a padded railing, but he went in there straight up. It was as if somebody walked up and whacked him. George Lentz, the Minnesota trainer, making sure Earl is all right. It is rare that you see a player injured near his own dugout. Normally, he could hear his teammates telling him no play or no room or look out. But with the big crowd roaring, Earl never heard anyone in the Minnesota dugout, and he hit the railing. Now, as you notice, that railing, just to the right on the picture, behind George Lenz, is padded. There's the replay. There's Mincher, but it's Batty we're worrying about. Bam. Drove him to his knees. Tremendous effort by Batty with his club trailing by four, bottom of the seven. Anxious twins and Willie Davis went over to make sure he was all right. And they're bringing a towel that appears to be dripping with ice water and applying it perhaps to Earl's face and then also at the base of the neck. You can see George Lynch now mopping Earl's face, the ice cold towel. So suddenly, in the third game of the series, we have two players shaken up. Lefevre had to leave in the fourth, and now Batty driven to his knees in a collision with the padded fencing 
around the dugout seats. Those dugout seats were inspired by the seats in Japanese ballparks. And Earl now being taken away. And we will have to have another catcher, unfortunately. Batty a little groggy. Jerry Zimmerman might be coming in. He has World Series experience. Zim was with the Cincinnati Reds, and here he comes. Well, gee, Earl Batty really gave that thing a terrible whack. Jerry Kendall, infielder, will help to warm up Merritt while Zimmerman puts on the gear. And there is Earl Batty taking down the steps and back to the runway. So we can only hope, each in our own way, that Earl will be okay and be back in the lineup tomorrow. There's Sam Mealy talking to Walter Alston. And now Jerry Zimmerman with the gear on. Goes out to get his sign squared away with Jimmy Merritt. So Jerry Zimmerman, who was on the National League champion Cincinnati Red squad and appeared in the series, now gets in when Earl Batty is shaken up, crashing into the railing and protective wiring in front of the dugout seats. The Dodgers played exhibition games in Japan in 1956, and it was in the Japanese ballparks they first saw dugout seats. Walter O'Malley quite impressed with the arrangement, and when he built Dodger Stadium, they were installed. One and one to count to Willie Davis, and as soon as we get a report on Earl, we'll pass it to you. One out, seventh inning, four nothing Dodgers. Four and one. Ron Fairley on deck. The sky, the overcast, just about burned off now. Getting a little blue. Fastball. Two and two. So Merritt now has shown it all. Fastball, curve, screwball. He's changed off the curve. Slow curve and a high fly ball down the right field line, hooking in the corner. Oliva leans over and one hands it for the out and made it look easy. Fine play by Tony. Well, he can do it all. So a fine play by Tony Oliva on the foul ball in the corner. Take another look as he just goes over so gracefully and leans in. Real easy like. Ron Fairley, slide to left, double to left, grounded out, one for three. Fairley, I believe, hit a changeup for his double. National League pitchers trying to off-speed him to get him out. One and one. Four nothing Dodgers, two out, bottom of the seventh, base is empty. Merritt is due to bat third, so this might be his last inning. Two and one to Fairley. Slow curve, hit to left center. Nausick got a good jump, goes back and makes the running catch. A fine play. He's a fine outfielder. 
And the Dodgers are out on fly balls. And at the end of seven innings of play, Dodgers four, Twins nothing. The anticipated change for the Dodgers. John Kennedy is now at third base for Jim Gilliam. As we go to the eighth inning with the Dodgers four runs, ten hits and no errors, the Twins no runs, four hits and no errors. There's John Kennedy. One note about Kennedy. He made his debut in the major leagues against the Minnesota Twins. And he homered as a pinch batter, breaking up a no-hitter of Dick Sigmund in 1962. John Mincher will lead it off. Low one. So Mincher, Quillacy, and we'll see about merit spot. Over. One and one. Claude Osteen pitching in his first major league game. His dad is here today in the stands watching him, and his dad is celebrating his 64th birthday today. And if you have a child, you know how he must feel. One and two. Don has singled a center and grounded a second. One for two. Hit that towering home run at Metropolitan Stadium. Breaking ball missed. Two and two. Fastball fouled off and back into the crowd. Time called now. Wills won sunglasses. And <laughs> they're quite a battle in the stands. The so Maury Wills goes to the sunglasses as that overcast has just about been burned away. Two and two. Behind him, ball three. Osteen walked Harmon Killebrew in the first inning. In the fourth inning, he had a three and one count on Killebrew, and Harmon rolled a short. Now he's three and two on Mincha. I believe those are the only three times so far where he's had a three ball count on a batter. Big hopper foul down the line. Largest crowd ever to see a game at Dodger Stadium, 55,934. Surpassing by about 30 or 20, the World Series crowds of 1963. Bouncer to Parker, backs up, doubles up to get it, underhands Goldstein. Tough play. When you have to back up on a ball here at Dodger Stadium, you risk the problem of letting that ball play you. And Parker, even though it skidded, kind of folded his body over it, and then Osteen alertly covering. Here's Quillacy. Quillacy hit into a force play and popped up. Frank over for 2. Pinch hitter on deck for Jim Merritt. Breaking ball, a strike. There's a report on Earl. One and one. Oh, I hope not. Well, oh, that's good news. The first paragraph of the Earl Batty story. One and one to Frank Quillacy. One out, eighth inning, four nothing Dodgers. On the corner with the fastball. Boy, that's quite a fit. His control has been that good. One and two. Osteen has allowed four hits. He had one trouble spot with one out, back-to-back -back singles in the sixth, and then Oliva hit into the double play. Change of foul back. Quillacy waiting and waiting and just did foul it off.
fastball just missed. Two and two. Osteen is not a strikeout pitcher. He averaged about five strikeouts a game during the year. He struck out two today. Ball three. His pitches are starting to come up just a little bit. And now the boys are getting up off the stools in the bullpen. Osteen starting to tire, apparently. And as he does, the pitch comes up. Three and two. Ground ball to Kennedy right under him. In the left field. Felicity rounding first and holding on as Lou Johnson gets it back in. Tough play. Kennedy played it to come up. The ball sunk. And he started to back up, as you saw. And he gets an error. Boy, once you back up in this ballpark, you're asking for trouble. That's Bob Miller, right-hander, loosening up in the Dodger bullpen. Sandy Valdespino will come up and bat. He went one for four in the first game of the World Series. He doubled against Don Drysdale. Sandy Valdespino will bat for Jimmy Merritt. Fouled away. By the way, there are three official scorers in the World Series. Those men are Joe McGuff of the Kansas City Star, Arno Gothel of the San Paul Pioneer Press, and George Letterer of the Long Beach Independent Press Telegram. 0 and 1 to Valdespino, hitting for merit. Sandy hit 261 during the year. He jammed him a little looper to Trususki. No play at first. Two out. So a fastball up and in. Jam Valdespino. That brings up Zoilo Versailles. Versailles has doubled and singled. He is two for three. He is five for 13 in the series. So two out, Quillacy at first. Four nothing Dodgers in the eighth. Parker not holding him on. They don't expect Frank to gamble down by four. Ball one. Claude Osteen with two out in the eighth, leading four to nothing. Ball two. So Osteen, who had walked one, has had a three ball count in the inning. Trying to get the ball down and has gotten it too low. He's behind two and oh. Kennedy is up a step inside the bag at third. Now he's high, ball three. Osteen, as you can see, is not a big man. He's not tremendously strong. He started 40 games during the regular season and completed nine. Some of them, however, he had to come out for a pinch hitter. Ball four. So his pitches now are starting to miss. He's not nearly as sharp as he was from the third through the seventh. That's the second walk allowed by Osteen. And the Twins with two out on an error and a walk have run as a first and second, and here is Joe Nosick. Nosick has grounded out twice and singled, one for three. He made the ball players out in the first inning. Versailles had doubled, and Nosick hit the ball to the right side, grounding out to get Versailles over to third. That's one of the least appreciated and biggest plays in baseball. Little pop fly on a breaking ball to Will. No runs, no hits, and error two left. And at the end of seven and a half innings of play, the Dodgers four, the Twins nothing. 
Lou Johnson will lead it off for the Dodgers in the bottom of the eighth inning, and here's how Lou feels about the World Series. I know we lost two games, but uh, that, uh, it takes four games to win this thing, and uh, I've been playing ball about 13 years now, and I know I'm not going to let those two games upset me, and uh, we're going out today, and we're going to win this game, and it's going to put a little pressure on them. Uh, what actually has happened is that uh, the people think that we are down, and by losing two games, well, naturally, the favorites uh, turn over to Minnesota. But uh, that's not true, as I said before. It takes four games to win this thing, and I've been playing 13 years, and I'm not going to sell for the uh, loser's share now. I'm going for the winner's share. Bottom of the eighth inning, the third Minnesota pitcher, right-hander Johnny Klipstein. Camilo Pasquale went five. Jim Merritt went two. Pasquale gave up three runs, eight hits. Merritt, one run, two hits. And now here's Johnny. Clipstein at one time in the Dodger organization. He came up to Montreal and was drafted by the Cubs, but made it to the Dodgers in 1958 and in 59. Breaking ball. Clipstein pitched for the Dodgers in the 1959 World Series against the Chicago White Sox. He was in one game, worked two innings, did not allow a run. Fouled away. 0 oh 2. Clipstein, in another week, will be 38 years old. Lou Johnson. Is two for two, both doubles. Fouled away. Boy, they're beating that outside chest protector at John Flaherty. Both foul balls. National League umpires work with the inside protector. 0 oh and 2. Behind him. And then twice, now Osteen once and Klipstein once, and both times a case of off-speed pitches slipping. No messages connected with either one. Two and two. The Dodger message board in left field is almost as much a part of the game as the players. One of the understatements of the year led off the message board in between innings. It said, same two teams here tomorrow. Fouled away. Two and two to Lou Johnson. Bottom of the eighth. 4 nothing Dodgers, Johnson, Krasuski, and Parker. Ball three. Ball four. So Lou Johnson draws a walk. He's bidding for a perfect day. Two doubles, a walk, and a sacrifice. It is the second walk given to the Dodgers, one by Pasquale and this one by Klipstein, and Osteen has walked two. Here's Krasuski, grounded out in the fifth inning. The Twins think he might bunt. He's around a bunt, takes a strike. In case you're not with us earlier, Jim Lefevre in scoring from second base in the fourth inning bruised a heel and twisted his ankle and had to give way to Trususki. A pitch out, no action. Then in the seventh inning, with Willie Davis at the plate, Willie hit a foul off to the right and Earl Batty crashed into the wiring. 
in front of the dugout seats alongside the Minnesota dugout, bruised his neck and jaw, and Earl had to leave. Strike, one and two. Suzuki checking to see if there's another play. Klipstein wants another ball. Johnson at first held on by Mincher. Eighth inning, four nothing Dodgers. Nobody out. Big boys come up for the Twins in the ninth. Spearheaded by Oliva and Killebrew. There goes Johnson. Hit and run, it's fouled away. So Lou Johnson back to first. Johnson stole 14 bases during the regular season. He goes again. Swung on and missed. The throw down to Versailles. He got him. Nice tag and whoop, Lou. Hold everything. There are a lot of people watching. A quick tag by Versailles. And Johnson is out two to six from Jerry Zimmerman to Zoilo Versailles. We'll take a look at it on NBC Instant Replay. There's Lou. There's Versailles. And there's second base umpire Stewart. Hold on. A little just about cooled off now. Will pats him on the back. Two out. And Wes Parker at the plate. Little pop fly. Versailles calling. That'll do it. No runs, no hits, nobody left. And at the end of eight innings of play, the Dodgers four, the Twins nothing. A reminder, immediately following this game, there'll be another edition of the NCAA College Football scoreboard over most of these NBC stations. Ninth inning, the totals through eight. The Dodgers, four runs, ten hits, and one error. The Twins, no runs, four hits, and no errors. The Twins, in the ninth, will send up Tony Oliva, Harmon Killebrew, and then we'll see about catcher Jerry Zimmerman. Oliva grounded out in the first inning, struck out in the fourth, and then with two on and one out in the sixth, hit into a double play. Runs under a curve, ball one. Claude Osteen trying to keep the Dodgers alive in this third game. He leads 4 0 in the ninth. Strike, one and one. The Dodgers will watch Osteen carefully. He showed some troubles in the eighth inning. They have Paranowski and Miller in the bullpen. One and one. Curve is lined to center base hit. Willie gets it back in. So Oliva, he is two for 12. And the batter, Armin Killebrew. By the way, tomorrow NBC will telecast one of the top American football league games of 1965. The San Diego Chargers meet the Buffalo Bills. One Eastern time, 12 noon Central time, live and in color exclusively on NBC. Drive into left center, but Willie's there. One away. Tony Oliva at first base, one out, and Jerry Zimmerman will come up. On deck, Bob Allison. 
So Zimmerman makes his first appearance of the series with the bat. Finishing up for Earl Batty, shaken up in the seventh inning. Zimmerman hit 214 for the Twins during the regular season. He had one home run, 11 runs batted in. One out, ninth inning, 4 nothing Dodgers. Strike, fastball on the corner. Tomorrow, looks like Don Drysdale and Mudcat Grant. Fastball missed. One and one. Osteen trying to go all the way. He needs two more outs. Fastball hit to Wills. That might be it. To the bag for one. Doubles in the first. So Claude Osteen brings the Dodgers back as they turn in their second double play of the game and their third of the series on the ground ball to Wills. So the windup of the third game of the 1965 World Series, the final score, the Dodgers four runs, ten hits, and one error. The Minnesota Twins, no runs, five hits, no errors. The winning pitcher, Claude Osteen, the losing pitcher, Camilo Pasquale. In a moment, we'll review the highlights of the game for you. The totals for this third game of the 1965 World Series as the Twins lead the Dodgers now two games to one for the Los Angeles Dodgers. Four runs, ten hits, one error, and six men left for the Twins. No runs, five hits, no errors, and five men left. Claude Osteen is still undefeated as far as the Twins are concerned. Camilo Pasquale, the loser. This game is authorized under television rights granted by the Commissioner of Baseball solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, reproduction, or other use of the pictures, descriptions, and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Commissioner is prohibited. Any commercial or other use of the program, such as by charging admission for its showing, is similarly prohibited unless authorized in writing by the Commissioner. The Dodgers in winning their first game of the 65 World Series, broke a scoreless deadlock in the fourth inning. Ron Fairley led off the inning with a double to left. He was sacrificed to third by Lou Johnson. With the Twins infield playing up, Jim Lefevre sent a bounder to short. Twin shortstop Versailles made a great play on the ball, but he could not make a throw to first as the runner held at third, runners first and third. Pasquale then walked Wes Parker to load the bases. And then came what turned out to be the only base hit the Dodgers needed. John Roseboro lined a solid single to right. Fairly scored, Lefevre scored, and it was two to nothing. The Dodgers scored single runs in the fifth and sixth. In the fifth inning with two out, and Willie Davis on second, Lou Johnson doubled to left center field, and it was three nothing Los Angeles. In the sixth inning, Wes Parker led off with a base hit to center off reliever Jim Merritt. With one away, was sacrificed to second by pitcher Claude Osteen and then scored on Maury Wills double to right center. And so the Dodgers make this series stand two games to one in favor of the Twins. Pasquale, the loser, worked five innings, gave up three runs and eight hits. Jim Merritt went two innings, allowed two hits and one run. John Klipstein worked the eighth inning and held the Dodgers without a run. And as Vin Scully mentioned a moment ago, barring a last-minute change in the thinking by the rival managers, Sam Mealy of the Twins and Walter Alston of the Dodgers, tomorrow's fourth game should find a rematch of the opening game pitchers. Jim Mudcat Grant for the Twins and Don Drysdale for the Los Angeles Dodgers. And so tune in tomorrow at 3.45 Eastern Daylight Time for the fourth game of this 1965 World Series when your hosts, as today again will be, Chrysler Corporation, famous for quality engineering. Today's hosts, Chrysler and Imperial and your local Chrysler and Imperial dealer. And by Gillette, the people who know men best.
This is the CBC Television Network.